All right, this is third grade, module seven, lesson 11. And in this lesson, students are gonna continue tessellating figures and they're gonna be uh, measuring the perimeter of these tessellated figures. Now, the reason why this lesson is optional, I think, is because technically a third grade standard, the third grade standard, 3MD8, is really talking about perimeter of straight edged figures. And this lesson allows for students to experiment with figures other than squares and rectangles, it, you know, hexagons, which are still straight edged, but also it allows for students to uh, possibly come up with perimeters of uh, funky shapes. Uh, and so that's, I think, why this lesson is optional. It's kind of fun, though. It's, you know, doing tessellations is like a blast for our third graders. So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about it and consider doing this lesson, uh, especially for the the fun artistic side that tessellations are. So let's get started. So the idea is first a quick recap for parents and teachers who might not not who might not know what a tessellation is. You know, a tessellation is any figure that when that figure repeats, it leaves no gaps and there are no overlaps. For example, if we take this hexagon, we can see that it it it, it repeats. And there are no overlaps, and it leaves no gaps. So that is a tessellation. And that's the idea. It doesn't have to be a hexagon that does the tessellating. Uh, because what you can also do is you could do these uh, rhombus, this rhombi, or rhombuses, I don't know. They tessellate. So you got these, okay, so it's, it's tessellating, leaving no overlaps, no gaps. I'm not sure about a tessellation. Uh, trapezoid. Let's see. Let's see what happens. I'm going to get these guys out of the way. Let's see what happens if we tessellate or try to tessellate a trapezoid. Let's see. Is it... Oh, look at that. If we put two trapezoids together, we get a hexagon, and we already know that a hexagon tessellates, so that means these trapezoids tessellate. That's kind of cool. So there you go. So Boy, these, so what tessellates in, so far what we've figured out is the hexagons tessellate, we know the rhombus tex tessellates, uh, that kind of gives us a suggestion that tr uh, squares will also tessellate, we have trapezoids, they tessellate, and triangles, I'll bet you they tessellate, we can find out, we could just kind of put, uh, oh yeah, look at that, you can put these tri triangles together and if you put the triangles together, you actually, and let's see if I can zoom in a little bit here. If you put the trap uh, triangles together, you get a trapezoid. And we already know that trapezoids tessellate. So if the tra uh, ta trapezoids tessellate, that means these triangles will too, because these triangles join together to create a trapezoid. That's kind of cool. So... The yellow ones, the red ones, the blue ones, and the green ones tessellate. I wonder if these tan shapes tessellate. Hmm. I'm going to leave that up to you guys to figure that one out. Now you can make your own tessellation, and it's kind of cool. So what you could do is you start off with a square, and then you get um, a pencil, and you use your pencil, and you draw some sort of figure on this square, all right? And then, ideally, what you do is you're going to cut it out, and then you're going to tape it over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to simulate that. I'm going to have to simulate what it looks like to cut it out. Um, so I'm going to go here. I'm going to go here. Trust me, I'm doing things. You just can't see it. All right, there we go. And then, so I'm going to cut it out, and I'm going to tape it directly on the opposite side of my figure. So what's going to happen is I'm going to end up with a figure that looks like this. And I'm going to go here, and I've got to trace it perfectly. Otherwise, my little demonstration is not going to work at all. All right, so there is my figure. So this kind of looks like a sideways Y is going to be the thing that tessellates, all right? So I'm gonna put these guys out of the way. And 
there, there, out of the way. Now here is my tessellating figure. And so what am I going to do? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace the red part. Oops, except I want to trace it in black. All right, so I'm tracing the red part. And I'm, a, I'm not going to quite complete it. And then I'm going to slide my red piece over. And it totally, perfectly fits. And then I put it right there. And then I'm going to trace the red piece again. There, I'm tracing my red piece. And, and then I'm going to take that guy. And then I'm going to slide the red piece again. And I'm going to trace it again. I'm tracing along that tessellating piece. And what you'll notice is eventually I've got this tessellating figure, leaving no gaps and no overlaps. And then if I wanted to, it's kind of cool, I could rotate it. And it's kind of cool. So I could, if I wanted to, I could take this guy and I could rotate it and I can go this way. And so there we go. And I'm going to trace that red piece again. And then I'm going to slide it to the left and trace again. Boom, 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 boom. And again, you can start to see that as I trace, I'm creating this really cool shape going this way and this way. It's I'm making a tessellation. I should finish that one. That was like that. Okay. And I'm finish I'm creating this is called a tessellation. So the homework is kind of based on that, and that's why this whole thing is optional. It says Samson tessellates regular hexagons to make the shape below. Outline the perimeter. All right, so we're going to outline the perimeter and with a highlighter. So boom, 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 boom. Boom. So there we go. I've tessellate, I've traced or outlined the perimeter and explained. How could we use a piece of string to measure the perimeter of this shape? Well, we can take a string and we can lay it around the outside of this flower, this tessellating hexagons, and measure the length of the string. And that would tell us the perimeter. So now the other thing is how many sides does this new shape have? Boy, you're going to have to do some serious counting. And, and figure that out. Now, the other question is shade in the area of this new shape with a colored pencil. So that, that's not so hard. That's where you, they want us to shade the inside of this figure. And I decided, okay, I'll shade it blue. So here's more of the same idea. It says estimate to draw at least four copies of this given triangle to make a new shape. So the idea is we will trace it. Whoa, that's not a good trace. That's a little better. It's not perfect, but that's good enough. And so I've got this figure, and we want four copies. So I can do that with the magic of technology. And it says at least four copies of the given figure. So, okay, well, I have five of them now. I'm going to ignore this guy for a second. And it says, make a new shape without any gaps and without any overlaps. All right, well, that's kind of fun. We can do this one goes here. Oh, let's make this one go here. Oh, let's do this one go right here. And then this guy can go right here. And now we have, I don't know, to me, it kind of looks like eyeballs and a nose. I don't know, it's kind of, I'm going to say, okay, here's eyeballs. And then, there you go. So there's there's your figure. Okay, uh, tessellations are fun. Uh, it does say to shade in the area with a colored pencil, so we should uh, be good students and do our job. So we're going to shade in our new area and give him a green mask. So now he's the green lightning or the Green Lantern, one of those Superman kind of characters. 
So here it says the marks on the string show the perimeters of Shyla's and Frank's shapes. Now we don't see their shapes. They're down here somewhere. We don't see them. It doesn't matter. But when we use the strings to measure their perimeters, whose figure has the greater perimeter? So whose perimeter is longer? Well, the answer is Frank's because his goes all the way here while... Um, Shyla's only goes to here. And so that shows us that Frank's perimeter is longer than Shyla's perimeter. And the last one. Um, so India and Theo use the exact same shape to create their figures. So here's India's figure, her tessellation. Here's Theo's tessellation. Uh, estimate to draw the shape that they used. What figure did they use to make their tessellation? So parents and teachers, there's a couple of possible answers that would work, and I'm going to let you guys um, listen to the wonderful answers your students come up with because um, I don't want to give it away. This is kind of fun. What kind of shape do students see that is constantly repeating in India's shape and Theo's shape? And then the idea is, how can you compare their perimeters? Whose perimeter is longer or are they the same? And that wraps up third grade, module seven, lesson 11. It's an optional lesson where we are tessellating figures to learn about perimeter.